coming up on the show, a professor at the University of Southern Mississippi has just opened up a new chapter for the Association for Women Geoscientists. And also coming up, after being restricted by COVID, this Hattiesburg grad chapter held their annual Community Impact Day at Chain Park. This is a story you won't want to miss. All of this and more on SMTV. SMTV News for Wednesday, March 6th starts now. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello USM and thank you for joining us on what was a beautiful day mm -hmm. it has been so far. I'm Beth L. Miles. And I am Amaya Norman. Here's our top news story for today. A professor on the campus of Southern Miss has started the first Mississippi chapter of an international organization for women. The international organization is called the Associ Association for Women Geoscientists. The organization had its first official meeting on campus on February 29th in the Chain Technology Center. The purpose of the meeting was to promote geoscience for women. In the meeting, they went through a itinerary of what they wanted to cover, like email address, logos, scholarships, and even nomination for presidents, secretaries, and more. The organization has created a diverse group representing Mississippi. The group includes professors, undergraduates, and graduate students from Mississippi. Students and professors alike from the University of Mississippi State, Delta State, and Jackson State are encouraged to join the organization. The group also has professional help from the University of Mississippi, the Mississippi Department of Environmental Qualities and Environmental Ge Geology firms. Membership is open to anyone who wants to support women in geoscience. If you are interested, please go to awg.org and sign up or contact Dr. Allison Brink at allison.brink at usm.edu for more information. Yep, that's right, Amaya. Those women are doing some great things. Similar to this Hattiesburg alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. They just recently hosted an extremely impactful day of events at Chain Park. This event featured arts and crafts, activities for children, with over 20 vendors and food trucks. Notably, the Southeast Mississippi Rural Health Initiative's Mobile Health Unit, alongside Vitalint, organized a blood drive, adding a health-focused dimension to the scheduled event. Despite a brief pause due to COVID, the sorority in its fourth consecutive year kicked off the event with a spirited 5K. Kim Huddleston, the chair of fundraising, expressed excitement about the community engagement and emphasized the sorority's commitment to giving back. Dr. Austin Graybell and his informatic labs are trying to make healthcare more accessible by reducing the distance between healthcare providers and patients. The lab is working on developing a mobile application that will be connected to the healthcare provider's DIXA, the research grade device that will provide body composition details. The DIXA will be located remotely in both the healthcare provider and the patient will be able to access the health information about the patient. So what we're doing here is try to decrease, or decrease the gap between patient and provider by uh, providing our healthcare information there are different modalities that are really, are really accessible to everyone, such as smartphones, smartwatches, and other remote techniques. The development of this project will help patients analyze risk for blood sugar levels, cholesterol levels, and other related health factors. Different features will be built in the application that will alert the users if something concerning is seen. This will help motivate people to make appropriate lifestyle changes that will help prevent certain diseases in the future. Graybell Lab is currently looking for students to take part in the research. Any students who want to participate can reach Graybell at austin.graybell at usm.edu. At the end of Creed Week, the USM Student Government Association hosted a Creed Carnival this Friday to honor our Creed. Creed Carnival Friday was held on March 1st, but due to inclement weather, the location was changed from Centennial Green to the game room on campus. 
The event's purpose was to not only get students together and talk about their shared values, but also get students together to talk about their agreed creed that they want to uphold. Students painted, played games in the game room, got free t-shirts, and were able to get their faces drawn. SGA also had snacks for students to enjoy, such as popcorn and cotton candy. You can be on the lookout for more events from SGA on their Instagram at Southern Miss SGA. Next, we have a special interview from SM2's own radio show, Southern Miss Today. This week's interview features the university president, Dr. Joe Paul. Now let's please give a warm Golden Eagle welcome to the USM president, Dr. Joe Paul. Hey, do hey Dr. Paul, so nice to have you joining me here today. You as well, Emily. So happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. What are some of the things that you do around campus? I know you're the president here, but what are some of those things that you do here on campus? Well, no, no day is like the next. Uh, but in general, you know, as, as uh, blessed as I am to lead this place, I'm, I'm out sharing the good news about Southern Miss, uh, speaking to student organizations, uh, meeting with the faculty senate, uh, uh, welcoming special guests to the campus uh, in the office, really working with the vice presidents on matters like budgets and strategic planning and what the future of the Southern Miss uh, uh, campus is going to be like. A um, lot of time spent in the state legislature looking for uh, uh, financial support for the university, a lot of time spent with alums and friends looking for private support. So generally speaking, I'm out and about, moving around. My favorite times are when I just walk through the campus and visit with our students. That's where I get my energy. On the students, what advice would you give current or incoming students? Okay, for current or incoming students, I would say uh, jump in with all your heart and all your soul. You know, um, if you're a new student, come with positive expectations uh, that you're going to be happy here, you're going to be accepted here, you're going to make friends here, you're going to be a campus leader here if that's what you choose, you're going to excel academically. Uh, so don't be shy. Don't be... Uh, slow to join. Uh, ride all the rides, a former president used to say, and that's what I would encourage you to do. Just like you did, Emily, when you came. You joined Pi Beta Phi. Here you are, a freshman. Uh, you're hosting a radio show at WUSM, uh, Mississippi's finest radio station. So be all in. The reality is the more that you engage yourself with the university, the more you'll come to love it. Are there any projects that is that you're working on within the school that you're able to yeah. share with us? Well, there are always lots of things going on. Our number one initiative is to grow our enrollment. I've been very, I've gone to 37 high schools in a year and a half and a bunch of community colleges myself. So we're always trying to get more students to come to Southern Miss to enjoy this very special place. In terms of projects, uh, the biggest one on the horizon, it's a few years away, is we need a new life science research center. Uh, so think Johnson Science Tower. Uh, the tallest building on campus, but it's sort of outlived its useful life. And we need a home for our faculty and PhD students in biology, biochemistry, and chemistry. And that building will be about a $90 million lift. Oh, wow. And we're about $50 million toward it right now. But that'll be constructed at some point in time in the near future. It'll be on the site that is just south of Walker Science Tower. So you think about that green lot there where the statue of Osceola McCarty is, it'll be on the back side of that lot. So that's the biggest thing we've got going, but we've always got lots happening. Um, do you plan on staying the Southern Miss president as long as you can? Well, um, I plan to stay as long as I'm needed and we're making a difference. Um, presidents of Mississippi institutions are on four-year contracts, and so I'm in the first year of a four-year contract. Uh, so that will take me at least to uh, the fall, end of the fall semester of 2026, and we'll just see where we are. Hopefully we're in a lot better shape by then. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Paul, for joining me here today and giving us an inside look about being the president. You're very most welcome. Amaya, they do such a great job at our school's radio station. Thank you so much for that, WSM. Hey. Stay tuned for your Flash News Briefing and more. Now, usually we cut to a break and play some commercials, but instead, this time, we got some of your peers talking about what they're going to be doing for spring break. Hello, I am going to 
going to Fort Morgan in Alabama. I'm really not doing too much for spring break. I'm just going to have fun, play sports, you know what I'm saying, just get the job done. We're going to see Burner Boy. Spring break, I would be working, making a little money on the side, trying to get ready for the uh, next part of the semester. That's pretty much it. For spring break, I'm going home and spending time with my family. I plan on going to Atlanta or somewhere out of state in Brisbane. So for spring break, I'm really just going to be um, catching up on schoolwork and studying. I know it's not much of a break, but you know, I got to do what I got to do. <laughs> what I'm doing this spring break is sleeping and just get my mentality ready for what's coming up next in my story. Um, I'm going to Disney World for spring break. For spring break, I think oh. I'm going to hang around here a bit oh, and back to breath. I'm going to the beach with my friends. I've been in Nashville the whole week looking for career opportunities in the music business. For spring break, I'm heading home to hang out with friends and family. Spring break, I'm going back to the house. Uh, Ride horses, fishing. That's it. For spring break, um, I'm spending time with my family. I'm doing hair. What I plan on doing is I have like three options. I think I'm gonna go to Houston to visit my friends. I think I'm probably gonna go stay with my grandparents and then go to Florida for a day. So it's still all up in the air. I'm just gonna be chilling, looking major. Yeah, enjoy my break. Basically. Need run down when I'm going for spring break. Leaving Thursday, going to Orange Beach, Alabama. I already know what goes down. With a couple buddies of mine, gonna get turned. If you ain't got turned in Orange Beach, you need to go now. Best thing ever. That's it. Oh, spring break. Just gonna be chilling with my family and eating food. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Around ADHD, there's tremendous ignorance. Most people are not aware of the positives. Can't sit still, disorganized, Annoying. can't focus, lazy, lazy, stupid. You can't make it. You don't listen, you don't bring your own. It's a super skill set. In local news, Hattiesburg just hosted the 12th annual Pine Belt Women's Expo. The first Women's Expo was held in 2011, but this year's expo was held at the Hattiesburg Train Depot on March 2nd. About 60 vendors were present and offered various products and services, along with information on finance, education, and healthcare, along with some gift items. The main purpose of this expo, as stated by Jennifer Clark, the expo founder and the owner of Emerge Events, is to make sure people leave with something they didn't know before they were here. Now for state news, a shooting in Lauderdale County left a man dead and a Mississippi deputy injured. On Friday, March 1st, a Lauderdale County deputy tried to initiate a traffic stop on an alleged drunk driver. The deputy asked the passenger to exit the vehicle. Then the passenger fired a gun at the deputy, leaving the deputy with non-fatal injuries. The deputy then discharged his weapon, leaving the passenger with fatal injuries. The driver of the vehicle was arrested without any injuries. Press release says that after NBI is done completing the investigation, agents will share their findings with the Attorney General Office. Yeah, now on to some more national news. Atlanta is crazy. Chaos unfolded near Six Flags over in Georgia, right before a celebration turned violent leaving a 15-year-old that is identified as Miss Littlefield in critical injury. Authorities report that an unruly crowd of about 500 to 600 people engaged in fights or assault 
prompted Six Flags Security Office to be called for assistance. Responding officers were met with gunfire on a service road just off the park's property. The Georgia's Bureau of Investigation is leading the investigation, but they have since revealed that multiple individuals began shooting, prompting a confrontation with law enforcement during the exchange. A Cobb City police officer fired, hitting a teenager, and the investigation still aims to unravel more of what happened at this scene that led to all of this violence. A lot of really, really hard things coming out of Atlanta lately. I don't know what's going on. The city is hot, so they say, huh? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Atlanta either. They need to solve that crime. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty fast, too. Most definitely. But speaking of hot and crime, we're going to take it to Rachel and see what she has to say for SMTV Sports. Mm -hmm. Golden Eagles, I am Rachel Brock and welcome to your SMTV weather. Let's get into it. On Thursday, you will need to dress warm because the high is 80 degrees and the low will only dip down to 59 degrees. But just because it's warm outside doesn't mean that the sun will be out all day. You should expect partly cloudy skies on Thursday. Now let's jump into our five-day forecast. This week will be hot following Thursday's high of 80 degrees. Friday will bring us to a high of 74 with a low of 45. Friday skies will also be covered with clouds and might have potential thunderstorms. Saturday has similar temperatures as Friday with a high of 73 degrees and the low at 45 degrees. You won't see much sunshine Saturday with mostly cloudy skies. Moving on to Sunday, we will see a partly cloudy sky with a high of 64 and a low of 40. And to round us out, Monday will also have partly cloudy skies and end us with a warm 68 degrees for our high and a cool 42 degrees for our low. Let's look at our rain chances. You will definitely want your umbrella on Friday because there is an 88% chance of rain. After Friday, Saturday only has a chance of 24% with rain. And the rest of the week will stay in the single digits for rain chances. Sunday and Monday only have a 4% chance of rain. And looping back to Thursday, there will only be a 14% chance of rain. And that is the end of your SMTV weather report. Whether rain or shine, be weather wise. Thank you for joining me, Rachel Brock, for your SMTV weather. Peace out, Southern Miss. weather has seen up and down lately but thank you Rachel we still have SMT sports and community calendar left in the show stay tuned don't go anywhere SMTV will be right back If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y-G-K-L-V-W, uh, regular you. Welcome back to your SM2 Sports Recap. I am Maya Evans, and we have a full and exciting recap for you this week. The Lady Eagles are now 17 and 12 after losing in a nail-biting overtime game to the Louisiana Raging Cajun, 58 to 57. In other news, Sun Belt named Dominique Davis as Player of the Week for the last week of the regular season. Two women's players have also been selected for the All-Conference Awards. Dom Davis is the first team All-Conference, and Malia Grayson is third team All-Conference. The women will be back in action March 6th in the second round of the Sun Belt Championship Tournament in Pensacola, Florida. It's a win or go home now. 
The men's basketball team is 16-15 after dropping their last regular season game to the Raging Cajun 77-61. On the other hand, Austin Crowley was selected second team all conference and Victor Iwaka is writing his name in the Southern Miss history books with 69 blocks this season coming at the fifth most block in a single season. The men will be back in action Thursday as they start in the second round of the Sun Belt Championship Tournament in Pensacola, Florida. The Eagles start the tournament in sixth place and play at 5 p.m. on March 7. Southern Miss softball are now 8-9 after an impressive weekend at the Bulldog Invitational. The Golden Eagles lead starts build 3-1. They lost to Mississippi State 0-9 but came back to take on Alcorn State winning 8-1. Lastly showed up and showed out against Sanford winning 17-15 in the second meeting. They came out victorious and they come back win 65. The Lady Eagles will be back on the road headed to Alabama at the North Alabama Tournament on March 8th. The Golden Eagles fall to 8-4 after Indiana State win the series finale. Southern Miss won the first two matches against the Sycamores. Starting pitcher Billy Ahan came in clutch with a 7 strikeout and a 2-0 win. Baseball will be back in action Tuesday, March 11th as Southern Miss hosts Alabama. Both men and women's tennis record win this past over weekend over Alcorn State. To Hannah Dye's led team as she picked up her third victory, the team is now 11-10 in doubles and 14-16 in singles. The men's team, tennis team will win their third straight match. Olim Jum Nadiv and Ala Northrop both lead team as they picked up their third win this season. Southern Miss men will open the Sun Belt as they host Coastal Carolina at 2 p.m. and then women will take on Texas State at 10 a.m. on March night at the Southern Miss Complex. Congratulations to Zane Palomino for qualifying for the NCAA Indoor Track Competition that will be held in Boston. Good luck. Also, congratulations to the men and women track team on earning all conference. And the moment you've all been waiting for, this week's Player of the Week goes to Dalton McIntyre for the men's baseball team. McIntyre has six hits and three RBIs over the weekend versus Indiana State. That's all for this week, folks. Make sure to catch us back after spring break for a recap of the Eagles. Peace and love. So if you're like me, you're a homebody, you stay to yourself. You don't really know what's going on around you. But we've got Kennedy Drake with that community calendar to give you the scoop. Hey Golden Eagles, my name is Kennedy Drake and I'm here with the Community Calendar where we gather information from around campus and within the community near you in Hattiesburg. The Southern Miss Activities Council will be hosting a virtual reality racing stimulator event March 8th at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the Union Lobby. This will be an afternoon of competition that allows everyone to feel they're actually behind the wheel of a race car. Come to battle with your friends while getting the thrill of race car driving. Indulge in a captivating journey through time during the afternoon tea experience at the historic Ross Mansion Bed and Breakfast. Save the date of March 9th at 1 p.m. in your calendar. This is an enchanting setting that invites you to savor a delightful array of fine teas, pastries, and finger sandwiches. Stepping foot in this mansion will ensure that you feel like royalty. Tickets can be purchased on the website on screen. USM's Office of Online Learning is hosting their event, Applying the Quality Matters Rubric Workshop for Southern Miss Faculty. This is an online WebEx event on March 11th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Guests will learn helpful recommendations by applying the rubric to an actual course. Space is limited and registration closes March 9th. Get your mobile tickets at everbright.com. Get ready for a trivia night on March 12th at the Porter at 8 p.m. Local comedian J. Evan Curry will lead us through three rounds of fun questions. The winner of each round will get a variety of prizes. Come out and prove which of your friends is the smartest in the group. If you have an event you would like for us to promote, send it to sm2news at usm.edu. This is just one way we thank our community for watching Southern Miss TV and supporting us here at Southern Miss Student Media Center. Visit our website, sm2media.com, to keep up with all of our news. Signing out, I'm Kennedy Drake, and this has been your Community Calendar.
some more sport news, NBA superstar LeBron James has become the first player in history to score 40,000 career regular season points. Despite the milestone, James expressed disappointment as his Los Angeles Lakers fell to the Denver Nuggets. Reflecting on his journey, James emphasized the immense pressure he faced since his debut over two decades ago. His, leg his legacy as one of the basketball greatest players and further solidified by this achievement. So, LeBron is the GOAT, obviously, but Rihanna is the GOAT in music. So, let's get into your entertainment news. Rihanna made waves with a reported, watch this, $6 million performance at a wedding of a billionaire Indian, Mr. Mikash Abina. Sorry about that. The event, attended by a star-studded guest list of about 1,200 people, featured Rihanna's iconic hits, marking her return to the spotlight after her hiatus from live performances. Rihanna entertained a massive crowd with her hit songs like Pour It Up, Pour It Up, Why Not All Fall Out, and more. <laughs> the event holds significance as she has taken a step back from the music industry in recent years, with her last studio album being released all the way back in 2016. Nonetheless, her star power remains inevitable, drawing attention and commanding substance fees for her appearances. Now, I love me some Rihanna. Oh my gosh. Now, on to our box office hit. Welcome to SNTV Cinema. For this week's episode, in honor of Women History Month, here are our two most popular films to, that were directed by women. First up on our list is Wonder Woman. This astounding superhero action film was directed by Patty Jenkins. This film serves as an original story for the iconic DC superhero, Wonder Woman. The film's namesake, the film explores themes of heroism, love, and the impact of war on humanity. Wonder Woman became one of the highest crossing movies of 2017 and a significant milestone for a female-led superhero film. The movie stars Gail Godo as Wonder Woman, Chris Pine as Steve Trevor, and David Twillis as Ares. Yes, last on our list is Blockbuster of 2023 Barbie. This film was also written and directed by Gre Greta Gerwig. Sorry, this fantasy comedy is based on the famous fashion doll from Mattel and the namesake of the movie Barbie. The film stars Margot Robbie as the title character and Ryan Gosling as the supporting character Ken. This movie takes the audience on a journey of self-discovery through multiple worlds. Barbie also has an underlying commentary about patriarchy and the effects of feminism. This amazing story was the highest grossing film of 2023 with a box office number of $1.446 billion. And that is all for SNTV Cinema. Until our next screening. episode of SMTV. Amaya, how you feeling? I know we're getting into this midterm area, but also spring break is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am most definitely excited for spring break. But thank you so much for watching SMTV. Make sure to visit our social media pages, like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southern Miss Student Media. If you would like to submit a news tip, email us at sn2news at usm.edu. Yep, that's right. And also, if you would like to advertise with SM2 Media, please reach out to us. We need you how you need us at joshwilson.usm at usm.edu. Apologies. You can find all these stories and more on the website, sm2media.com. But for today, that's it for SMTV. Thank you for joining us. And as always, Southern Miss to the top.